Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm great, James. How are you doing? I'm, you know, I'm feeling good. And I, I, I watched this film yesterday and I'm still uh, profoundly moved, mm. profoundly moved. You're a musician. How did you get, I mean, that's such a great fit for you. How did you get involved in this project? Well, uh, I just read the script. I have an agent who said they were looking for this role and uh, she knew that I was close to the role. Uh, and I didn't even know how close I was to it until I read it. So I, I've been, you know, as a young boy in the 50s, uh, I, my, my parents were deaf and Paul Anka, Bobby V, Elvis, I used to, I used to get records and try to sign them for my mom, who I knew. And I would always be trying to portray music because my mom lost her hearing when she was five. Oh, my and gosh. She still remembered music. That's where that, that's where that line comes from in the movie where I tell Riz, uh, I still remember the last song that was playing before that bomb went off. That, that wow. comes from my mother remembering a certain song before her, she lost her hearing. So I was always trying to, it was a frustrating thing as a kid, not yet a musician, but trying to become one and try and portray music to my mom. I always mm -hmm. felt that I always missed the mark, but I was always, it was a painful experience to just try and do that. Now I've got a, a heavy metal band, a Black Sabbath tribute band. <laughs> I, so sing cool. all, I sing all of Ozzy's stuff and I sign it. And we have 50 to 60 deaf people that show up at these nightclubs uh, every time we play or uh, when we open up again, they will. I, you know, I actually have a, I have a confession. I was watching your, some of the videos you made. Uh, and I was just so moved. How did this come? So first of all, what song was it? If you don't mind sharing that, what was the song of your mom? Oh, my, oh, my mom. Yeah. She remembered I'll get by and I'm sitting in her lap in a rocking chair. And she's, she says, she started singing, I'll get by as long as I, you know, and, but she would sing like, I'm in my, it was like this weird. And I, and I looked at her and I remember this. I looked, I said, mom, that's not how it goes. And this look of disappointment just covered her face mm. as if to say, oh, I don't know how to sing anymore. And then my heart broke. So I was always making up for that one remark I made to her. Mom, that's not how the song goes. But she was just trying to sing it for me. Such heartbreak and uh, profound feeling of loss. And how can I make that up to you and show you what music? When the Beatles came out, she bought me tickets to go see the Beatles twice. And I came home to tell her what the show is about. And uh, I would try to portray, you know, uh, I, I want to hold your hand while I was on sign a tour. And she, you know, she, she remembers seeing Frank Sinatra when she was a teenage girl, oh a deaf God. teenage girl. Yeah, at, wow. at the Chicago Theater. So she just loved music. Deaf people like music. My father didn't give a rat's ass because he never heard anyway. <laughs> okay. So, you know, there's, there's so many different deaf people around. Well, how did, how did you get into Black Sabbath? That, that's really cool. <laughs> well, I've always been doing music. Like in Chicago, I was in a David Bowie band, Ted Nugent kind of stuff. When I moved out here, I was, I've been acting for years and years, and I started to miss it. So I started auditioning, and I hit upon this Black Sabbath band. And then one day we decided to do it in sign language. Uh, to, and we put it on Facebook, and it went viral. And so the band comes to me, and they go, hey, why don't you do everything in sign language? And so we started doing the hour and a half show in sign language and deaf people just flock to it. They love it. They can't get enough of it. That's a, I oh. see. I'm not even deaf. I would love to see that. That's such a profound way to express music. Well, these heavy meddlers and these clubs, they come up to you, they go, you know what? The best part of the show is watching you do your music to your people. <laughs> oh my, my people. God. Yeah. It's because there's, the, there's definitely a connection. Deaf people are just glued to what's going on and the music is sabbath it's loud and heavy and it's right here so yeah. it's made for deaf people it's and the lyrics are prolific yeah, yeah. and it, well i mean the sound of metal you can feel it you can feel the room shake i even you know having not having that issue right. you can feel it so i can imagine it must be an, an incredible feeling for them yeah. are you in la i am i am in la Dude, you got to come and see my band uh when, when, when we start playing again 100 percent. i'd love yeah. to i'll and, look you, you know, up yeah 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 yeah, yeah. no it's uh so with this movie i guess uh we gotta wrap it up dang it let me give you one quick one Go what ahead. do you hope people get out of this film i hope they see that deaf people are, are not a monolith there's so many different kinds of deaf people your hearing is precious you know you think standing in front of a big speaker or listening to these 
iPods, uh, you, you can damage your hearing. So that that's one thing. But the other thing is deaf people are just like us. They have addictions. They make mm -hmm. mistakes. They're not these little saints. It's because they're poor little deaf people. They're not. No. They're, they're like us. So, you know, deal with it. When this crappy, mundane world suddenly becomes radiant and magnificent, all the fear is gone. That place will never abandon.